Hello. Welcome to Big Picture Monday. My name is Callie Black and let's talk about the context you need to totally rock this week's Come Follow Me readings, which is Matthew chapter 5 and Luke chapter 6. These are amazing chapters filled with just some great teachings and I am so excited. I usually like to give you like an overarching theme like, oh, this is basically about Jesus's baptism or whatever. And this week is obvious. Um, and in fact, it will continue on next week as well. And the theme the, that we're looking for this week is the Sermon on the Mount. And in the Sermon on the Mount, you may have, heard, I'm sure you've heard of that sermon before, but I want to give you a little bit of context of what it really is about um, and, and what we know about it. But basically, this is the most detailed description that Jesus ever gives about how to be a disciple of Christ. Um, it is pretty early on in his ministry, right? We feel like we're still at the beginning of Jesus's ministry here. He's performed a few miracles. He's done a few things, but this is the first time that we have record of him just teaching, just talking <laughs> and, and teaching what he thinks the people need to hear at that point in time. And in fact, this sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, is the longest sermon that we ever have record of Jesus giving. So not only is this the first, this is also the longest. It's the most comprehensive time that he ever just sits down and teaches that we have record of, of course. Um, and that's what I love about it, is there's so much to learn from what Jesus is just teaching to the people that he is preaching to, um, which is pretty cool. So let's, first of all, I wanna talk about the book of Matthew because the book of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount covers three chapters, Matthew five, six, and seven. So we're only doing Matthew five this week. We're only getting the first third of the Sermon on the Mount. Next week, we'll study Matthew six and seven. So we'll finish up Sermon on the Mount next week. So really in your mind, kind of loop these next two weeks together. It's the, they're the same context. It's all the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and we know that Jesus gathered his disciples disciples on the mountain and gave them these teachings. If we remember in Matthew chapter 4, right before this, Jesus had kind of just started his ministry. He's performing some miracles and he's starting to gain a lot of attention. A lot of people are wanting to follow him and be by him because they see that he's healing the sick and he's he's performing miracles. So he's starting to get this larger following. And here we see in Matthew chapter five, Jesus is now teaching. Now, the interesting part is that in Luke chapter six, we see if you read through Luke chapter six, first of all, it actually starts with some stories. So we start with some stories first, but once Jesus starts teaching, we actually get a completely different context. We get a totally different context than Jesus being on the mount and teaching. Um, in fact, it specifically says Jesus is on a plane and he's teaching. And so you'll often hear what is taught in Luke chapter 6 referred to as the Sermon on the Plain. Maybe you've heard that before, maybe you haven't. Um, but what it is, is the words that Jesus teaches in Luke chapter 6, and it's only Luke chapter 6, so it's not as long, only Luke chapter 6. The words are very similar to what he teaches in the Sermon on the Mount, but it's about a third less, right? <laughs> and like literally, it is about a third less. Plus, Matthew takes up three chapters to do it. Luke takes up really less than one chapter to record these words. Um, so it's less material but it's also a completely different setting that we hear. So basically most people assume that it is a different sermon. That's why we give it a different name, even though they are the same teachings that are found in the Sermon on the Mount. So it's great to study them together because it's very similar. You'll see um, everything that we study in Luke this week we are reading either in Matthew this week or next week. We're covering it in the Sermon on the Mount as well. So I love that we get to study it, but I just want to give you a heads up. They are technically considered two different sermons because we get different settings for each. So we've got the Mount for one, we've got the Plain for the other. Okay, one more piece of information you need to know of context before we start reading is who are the scribes? In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus calls out the scribes many times. <laughs> he calls them out many times, but like literally by names, not, not like individual name, but he calls out the scribes. But also if you read through the Sermon on the Mount with, with the definition of the scribes, of a description of the scribes in mind, you'll realize like 
he kind of was calling him out the whole time, even if he wasn't specifically saying like, as the scribes do or whatever. So the scribes were a group of Jews and it was their job, it was their job to copy the scriptures, to write out copies of the scriptures. And if you can imagine writing the entire Old Testament by hand, that would definitely be a full-time job, absolutely. And they were very meticulous. In fact, they would go through afterwards and count, like as part of their editing, editing process, they would count how many letters and spaces to make sure that there weren't any mistakes being made. Like they were very particular in copying not only the Old Testament, but also the other things that had been added to the Law of Moses since then. A lot of Oral traditions, we call them, had been added to what we consider to be the Old Testament, um, but a lot of those were also written down. And so that was the scribe's job, is that they would write these down. But then it was also their job to be like, it, it became their job to be the authority on the scriptures, because who would know the scriptures better than the people who are literally copying and writing them all day, right? So they became the voices of authority on what was in the scriptures. And then if you think about it, in this Jewish culture at this time, religion and government was completely intertwined, right? There was no separation at all. And so when it came to legal matters, the scribes became the authority then in political and legal matters in interpreting how the scriptures would be applied to that specific legal case that's being brought before them, right? So that's kind of the interesting position that the scribes fell into is they became the authority on the scriptures and now all of a sudden they're in the legal realm interpreting the scriptures and what that actually looks like in real life and who deserves a punishment and who deserves mercy and all that kind of stuff. So scribes, very big role in both religion and people's daily lives in legal terms. Um, so you'll see as you read through the Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Plain, Jesus either alluding to or specifically calling out the scribes for either not having their actions follow through with things that they believe, or they say that they believe, their actions aren't following through, or they are performing actions, but their heart isn't really in it. Like they don't have good intentions for why they're doing what they're doing. So really interesting to read about the scribes. And of course, of course, as we're reading this, we should never be like, wow, those scribes are ridiculous. But instead thinking, where am I in that? When do I do that? <laughs> because of course we can all find personal examples in this as well. Um, okay, as you read the Sermon on the Mount, you'll see, of course, Jesus just teaches, but he also gives a lot of analogies. Um, he also gives something that's called the Beatitudes. I'm sure you've heard that before. Beatitudes is a Latin phrase that means blessed are. So Jesus lists a bunch of people and groups of people who are blessed um, if they have certain attributes. So that's what the Beatitudes refers to, or any verses that you read that stay, say blessed are. Okay, so as you read through um, in Matthew 5, that is all the Sermon on the Mount, the first third of the Sermon on the Mount. So we'll continuing on next week with the next two chapters. But as you read through it, he starts with the Beatitudes. He teaches that he has come to fulfill the law and to bring a new law. And then he also teaches some new commandments like love love your neighbor, but also love your enemy as well. Some tough, some tough commandments to hear sometimes. Um, so that's what we'll see in Matthew chapter five. So in Luke chapter six, as I mentioned, it does start off with a few stories. The Sermon on the Plain starts on verse 20. So everything before verse 20 is just continuing on um, with the story as we've been reading about Jesus. It starts with Jesus healing the withered hand of a man on the Sabbath. And a lot of people condemn Jesus for doing that healing on the Sabbath. And then we get an account of Jesus calling all 12 of his apostles. And this is actually, you might be thinking like, okay, hasn't Jesus called his apostles yet? Have we been reading about that a lot? Yes, we have read about lots of accounts of some apostles, but this account in Luke chapter six is actually the first time in our Come Follow Me progression that we are now reading all 12 names of the apostles. We've heard about certain apostles many times. We are now getting the list for the first time in our accounts, um, in our progression, all 12 of the apostles. So you get to read that first. We'll dive into that more in a couple weeks um, as other accounts hit on that later, because I think it's 
if it were me, I'm going to really focus on the actual teachings, like the sermons this week. That's definitely the main focus. And then verse 20, we start the Sermon on the Plain, um, which you're going to see very familiar things. Jesus is also saying, blessed are, um, and he's giving new commandments as well and talking about how we need to build on a strong, solid foundation like a rock. Okay. That is it for this week. Pretty easy context wise. And in fact, next week will be pretty simple as well. So I'll be back with a quick little reminder next week um, for the Sermon on the Mount as we finish it up and with a few new insights for next week. But otherwise, this should carry you. This, this is going to be amazing. I love these teachings. I think my personal focus question, I have been on the soapbox for a while. I love the commandment that we read about that confuses a lot of people that says, be ye therefore perfect be there for perfect, right? And I think recently I've heard a lot of like talks and, and other people talking about how they love that perfect is more like whole. And I love if that resonates with you, go for it. But I had a, um, a professor at BYU who taught me in both Book of Mormon and New Testament, I absolutely loved him. And he actually said his favorite translation, because these are all translations, right? We're doing our best to interpret what was actually written down. Um, he said that his favorite translation is, be ye therefore spiritually mature. Spiritually mature. And I just love that. That resonates with me so much because it's so easy for me to think about, <laughs> am I being immature? Am I coming up with excuses? Am I putting the blame on other people? Am I dragging my feet? Am I having a bad attitude? I have lots of great examples of what it looks like to be immature. Um, and instead transforming into spiritual maturity. What does it look like to be someone who is very mature in a spiritual sense when it comes to spiritual matters. Um, I think, I, I, and my I, different qualities come across on the spectrum there of immaturity <laughs> to maturity. So this week I wanna reflect on where am I still spiritually immature and where can I work on building that maturity in those manners? Um, because I just love that commandment. We can be perfect. We can be spiritually mature. We can become as spiritually mature as we possibly can. That's something that we can keep working towards and feel, you know, that sense of accomplishment as we go there. Okay, have a great week this week studying the Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Plain, and happy studying.